about on-time departures. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Andrew Charlton, and in the next day and a half, you'll be very sick of the sight of me, uh, and I apologise in advance for that. But I've asked you to be ready, and I'm very grateful that you are, and now suddenly I'm in a very embarrassed place. And this is terrible, because I have left my papers for today's meeting. I think I must have left them on the aircraft. It's very, very embarrassing. But I was speaking to the ladies, and they have suggested to me that what I should be doing is ringing the airport, because this is Latvia, and Latvia is a new country, and it can do new and marvellous things. So I have lost my papers. It's most embarrassing, but stand by, because I'm going to ring the airport, and here we go. Airport administration, how can I help you? Hello, this is the moderator of RBS conference in Riga calling. I have an emergency situation. I think I have left a file with very important documents on the airplane that arrived in Riga an hour ago. Yes, I understand. We can't open the conference without these papers. Just a minute, please. Please, hold the line. The Chief of Riga Airport speaking. I have just been informed about your problem. We will do our best to have your documents found as soon as possible. Yes, it looks like we have it. Where shall we deliver them? Radisson Blue Hotel, Latvia, in 15 minutes. Within 15 minutes from the airport to Riga Center at this time of the day, when basically all the bridges are stuck with heavy traffic? Are you joking? Maybe someday in the future, but... Trust me, the future can be changed today. Delta Tango Charlie 205, ready for takeoff. Request for clearance. Delta Tango Charlie 205, you are going for takeoff. Climb altitude 320 feet. Please contact through the control. Riga Tower, climb altitude 320 feet. We will contact uh, Riga Control. Thank you. Riga Control, Delta Tango Charlie 205, estimated Echo Victor Romeo 2 at uh, 0655. What is that? Everything is possible in Latvia, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> it is my pleasure to ask the Minister for Transport uh, for the Republic of Latvia, Mr Andreas Matis, if he'd be so kind as to open this conference. Minister, if you may. I have your speech. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Yes, te technologies can, can, can make uh, life much more easier. We saw that already. So, ministers, excellencies, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, it's my honor and pleasure to open the high-level conference on remotely piloted aircraft systems, which is organized by the Latvian Presidency of the European Council in cooperation with the European Commission. We are happy to see that stakeholders are represented in this meeting. Public authorities from EU member states, policy developers, designers and manufacturers, regulators, eventual commercial users of the new type of services, and as well as general public. I believe that over the upcoming two fruitful days, 
we will all have the opportunity to exchange our views and obtain new first-hand information from practitioners. We also hope to move closer to a common understanding on how to facilitate the achievement of EU goal of enabling the progressive development of the commercial drones market while safeguarding the public interest. The efforts in the field of research and development during the last years have promoted the very rapid development of advanced technologies that makes images from scientific fiction to reality. Solutions which were for military application only are now available for commercial use. It opens great opportunities for the manufacturing industry which produces sophisticated automated flying devices, generates new tasks for researchers and designers, and offers fantastic until now unavailable services to the public. At the same time, certain risks are closely associated with the benefits of introducing remotely piloted aircraft systems for commercial use. Not to harm the public interest, a number of complicated technical safety, uh, security, regulatory and ethical problems must be solved. We could be proud to see in this hall the resources for moving into the right direction. I wish you again, everybody, two fruitful days during the conference and happy staying in Riga. Thank you very much. Thank you, Minister. Thank you. I'd now like to call on the Director General of DG Move from the European Commission, Mr. Wa Agia Machado, if he'd be so kind as to set the scene for why we're here for a couple of days. Thanks very much. Dear Minister uh, Matis, dear Ministers, Bausch and Midzi. Ladies and gentlemen, it is with great pleasure that uh, I am here uh, to set the scene for this important high level conference on drones that uh, we are going to have it today and tomorrow. Drones are the talk of the year. Every day we read stories about drones in the newspaper. And believe it or not, drones were even the most popular gift for the Christmas season last year. I'm just going to indicate one or two uh, stories uh, that got media attention last year and which shows the potential that uh, this technology will bring. Story number one, drones improve healthcare. A drone delivered medicine and medical equipment to villagers in Bhutan with approximately one doctor for every 3,300 people and no suitable road alternatives, this service saved many lives. Story number two, drones finding missing people. A 82-year-old suffering from dementia and hearing loss went missing. The police had been searching for this man for three days. A drone flew above one of the last places that had not yet been searched and found the man in within 20 minutes. Story number three, drones uncover the past. Drones are now being used as a new tool in archeologists' toolkit. They offer a detailed aerial perspective that archeologists have never seen before and give an immediate sense of spatial scale, which is very useful for planning excavation. There have been many other stories recently, even this year, of, and very recently, of drones flying around Eiffel Tower or other tourist attractions in Paris, or even drones landing in the White House uh, lawn. But the stories I mentioned, I indicated to you, and this is uh, an illustration of the many uses that this technology brings. These stories are certainly better stories 
than the stories that we were used to hear about killing drones, which were with which this technology was risking to become associated with. Ladies and gentlemen, to kick off this conference, I would like to ask some basic questions. First, what exactly are we talking about when we mention drones? Are we talking about smaller drone operations that I just indicated in the three stories I read to you? Or are we talking about drone technologies, which is another step in the automation of flying? Or do we see drone technology as the future of aviation? I think Europe should be ambitious and embrace drone technologies because it is an essential part of the future of flying. Drone technologies will make aviation activities expand from the traditional aviation industry into other industries like healthcare or energy services. The very many usages of drones make possible so many more types of operations. European businesses are entitled to make the best use of drone technologies to help them expand and remain competitive. That is our bottom line. We want to see jobs and growth back to Europe. That is the name of the game. Let's embrace the change that is coming to aviation from remote, remotely piloted systems. And the change, indeed, is coming very, very fast. What seemed unthinkable just a few years ago is becoming reality. In fact, the history of aviation is a series of unthinkable changes. In the early days of aviation, you will remember the standard aircraft at the crew of five in the cockpit. Two pilots, one flight engineer, a navigator, and a radio operator. It was technological innovation together with safety processing and with adapted safety rules that made first the radio operator redundant. Then went the navigator. And the introduction of the jet engine made the flight engineer superfluous. In the 60s, aircraft were developed for two pilot operations. And that became the standard in the 70s and in the 80s. Today, after 30 years of two pilot operations, modern aircraft are able to fly automatically and safely in all phases of flight from taxiing to takeoff, over climb and cruise, to the safe landing again and taxiing back to the gate, under the supervision of two pilots who can at all times intervene and take over from the machine. Now, with the drone technology, this revolution evolu goes one step further and a major step forward. From the current situation of two pilots in the cockpit, we are going to go for one pilot in the cockpit on the ground, no longer on board. We have to learn a lesson from this evolution. This evolution of automation has not come overnight. It has required engineering. It has required safety management. And it has required also regulatory accommodation. These are exactly some of the themes of our conference here in Riga. Several EU member states have already taken regulatory action. Smaller drones, typically below 50 kilos, are allowed to fly for commercial operations already today and under certain conditions in the Czech Republic, Denmark, Finland, France, Germany, Italy, Spain, Sweden, and UK. So drones cannot yet operate legally in the 19 other EU member states, 19. Neither can they operate if they wait more than the limit for small drones. And certainly 
they cannot operate if they weigh more than 150 kilos because the EU has not yet developed specific rules. Does this situation solve the regulatory problem? It does not. Last year, the European Commission published a communication setting out the issues, the opportunities, but also the concerns. And there are concerns out there, concerns related to safety, to privacy and data protection, to security, to liability regimes, or to technological development. Indeed, we have also seen those kind of stories in the press, loss of control of drones in crowded places, intentional or unintentional violations of privacy, and unidentified overflights of security sensitive locations. The Commission communication of last year was aimed at putting some fundamental questions out there. We asked all of you for possible answers through an open consultation. We received more than 250 responses, and I would like to use this opportunity to thank all of those who have participated in responding to that uh, consultation. Since we, we have received the re replies, we have put our experts at work over the last months to process the ideas that were suggested and formulate options to answer those questions. Now the time has come to start choosing those options and to start making decisions. Our meeting here in Riga is part of that process. We need to get out of the meeting tomorrow with a clear sense of direction to the industry so that they can make secure investment decisions. And we need to give clear assurances also to citizens that their rights, safety and security will be safeguarded. That should be our ambition for this conference. Ladies and gentlemen, so far my introduction to set the scene for this conference. Let me now briefly explain how we have organized the discussions and what we expect from the three panels. The first panel is the industry panel. We want to hear from industry representatives how they assess the importance of drone technologies, how they see new market opportunities develop, how they intend to adapt their business models to innovate drone operations, where they want to invest in drone programs in the future, and last but not least, what they expect from the community of European regulators, many of those present here today. At the end of the day, we all know that the political debate will focus on striking the balance between enabling drone activities and adequately protecting European citizens. The question is precisely how best to strike that balance. The second panel is the safety regulators panel. The panel is about pro providing the regulatory answers to opening the European drone market. What rules make drone operations safe? How can we construe rules that are proportionate to risk, adequately protect citizens without oppressing emerging technologies? Do we need to assume that all drones are aircraft that require specific aviation safety regulations, or are drones somewhat different? And finally, the third panel is about public acceptance. People are fascinated by drones. At the same time, they are also scared by drones. Drones may crash in city centers. Drones may be used as weapons. Drones may intrude in the, into the private domain and data that drones gather may be abused on the internet. And there is also an environmental angle. Drones may become a noise nuisance. So what can we do about these public concerns? I look forward very much to, the fruitful, to a fruitful and lively discussion today and tomorrow.
I now have the pleasure to hand over to Andrew Carlton that will guide the panel discussion this afternoon. Andrew is being beyond, I'm told, being a connoisseur of Australian football, is one of the most experienced aviation experts that I know. He knows aviation inside out. He has a background in airlines, in service providers, and industry bodies, in both commercial and the political arena. So I'm pleased to pass the floor to you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. I thought I'd start the discussion today with a quick rundown of the rules of Australian rules football um, because, frankly, I'm much better at Australian rules football than I am at aviation. Um, I understand that the Minister has to leave at this juncture, so perhaps uh, while we see the Minister out, could I ask the first panel to make its way up onto the stage, please? Thanks very much. 